Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here, and welcome to your first look and hands-on of Samsung's new mid-year drops for 2022, the Flip 4, the Fold 4, and a really impressive looking new pair of watches. So this is everything you need to know about all of it. So I'm gonna start with the phones, and the theme for the phones is definitely refinement. And this was already the theme last year and the year before, but look, in the relatively young world of foldable phones right now, if we're being honest, Samsung is kind of dominating the space. Like there's only a few foldable phones that real people are actually buying right now. And the Flip is apparently the most popular folding phone in the world. So the Flip 4 looks and feels very much just like a Flip 3. Like there's really three things that are notably new about it and they're all subtle. So one is a slight aesthetic trimming. So the bezels are just a little bit slimmer on the inside. The rails feel a little bit more trim and flat. Plus there's a new set of colors. Then two is it's a bit stronger and more durable. So that's always good to see in a folding phone. So the hinge is a little bit more trim and still feels very sturdy to open and close. And of course stays half open for all the software features that take advantage of that. And then three is there's updated specs. And I'm thinking, this is just me just using context clues, but I'm thinking that the most noticeable improvement year over year with this phone might actually be battery life. So this phone has the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which has had excellent efficiency in some other phones I've tested so far. Plus the battery also bumps up from 3300 to 3700 milliamp hours. That's a small thing, but it's a combo that could be great for battery life. Plus it still fast charges up to 50% in 30 minutes. Not bad. Other than that though, the hardware you're looking at is very similar to the last flip. And really there's one big new software feature, which is a bunch of new widgets and lock screen stuff on the outside cover screen. So you gotta love the lock screen customization and the functionality, potentially even matching your watch face to your phone. So if this was early days, maybe the first one to two generations of the phone, that's when you'd expect to see more tinkering with like the size of the outside screen and what it really should be capable of. Now that they've settled on this size though, they're really just adding stuff that you can do with it. So you can change quick settings, take a selfie, activate the flashlight, accept a phone call, start a new phone call, all types of stuff like that. This is all good quality of life stuff. Makes a lot of sense. And I think there's flip fans out there, <coughs> Austin Evans, um, who like the previous versions who are gonna like this one too. But at the same time, if you weren't convinced on the flip, whether it's because that crease is still somewhat visible and feelable when you scroll, or because you don't like the idea of having to open up the phone every time you wanna use it, or whatever else might've bothered you, none of that has changed either. So this new one probably won't change your mind. And neither will the new price because it's the same as the old price, $9.99. So there are other phones that you could get for this price, other flagships, you know, gaming phones, slab style phones, but this one for $9.99 folds in half. And it's probably the most appealing folding phone to most people. But on the other end of the spectrum though, is the big unfolding productivity monster, the Fold 4. So this is actually the one I'm personally most interested in. And uh, what if I told you that the exact same set of things is new on this phone too? Well, it's actually a little bit more than that same stuff, but the Fold 4 also has an improved, slightly slimmer hinge, which is one of the most important overall pieces of this phone, and it feels firm and confidence inspiring and very satisfying to clap closed, which is great. Uh, it has a nice satin finish on the back with three colors, the gold, the black, and then this deep blue. And then it does in fact have a stronger Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the outside paired with those aluminum rails. They've also, updated the specs, again, with the same new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 inside, the highest end chip available, and it does have the same size 4400 milliamp hour battery as last year. And then there's a new camera system on the back as well. So these folding phones have never quite had exactly the same set of cameras as the highest end flagships, you know, the ultra phones, but they do typically get right up underneath as the next best thing. So this fold here has a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 3X telephoto, which will let you get up to 30X space zoom. I will definitely be testing these new cameras in these flipping folding phones in the full review, just to see how good they are. But if I was guessing, if I was guessing, they'll probably probably perform pretty similar to like an S22 plus, which is to say pretty great. We'll see though. And then surprise, surprise, the Fold 4 also has one big new software feature. This time it's on the inside screen and that's the dock at the bottom. So you'll notice when you open an app, the entire dock shrinks down to the bottom into this sort of bar, kind of like a Windows taskbar. And from there, you can easily launch recent apps 
or hop back and forth between apps quickly, or even launch straight into multitasking with two or three apps on the screen at once. It's a small change, but I think it makes a big difference to keeping it easy and fluid to quickly multitask on a phone like this. I don't know about you, but when I open the phone up and it's got this huge seven inch screen inside, I just want to use a lot of stuff and multitask. So you've got the button to open up any app all the way on the left. You've got the navigation buttons all the way to the right. I really do like this taskbar. And then just flipping through the device for a bit, the rest is very familiar to what we've seen. Just again, slightly refined. The outside cover screen is actually three millimeters wider. So it's a slightly different aspect ratio. Again, thanks to slimmer bezels. And you can just barely tell by eyeballing it. And on the inside, the bezels all the way around again are just slightly thinner. And the crease through the middle, to my eye, is a little bit less visible than it is on the flip, though it's not too different from last year. Basically where if you're looking at the content on the screen, you really don't notice it too much because you don't pass your finger over it when you're scrolling like maybe you would on the vertically folding phone. Maybe if you're a big stylus person, you'll get the whole S Pen case and everything, and then you really notice the crease when you draw a lot over the middle. But yeah, I'm not one of those people. So basically, it's there if you're looking for it, but it's not really too bad if you're not. You know what else though, you probably didn't notice if you weren't looking for it, the new under display selfie camera right up here on the top right hand side. So Samsung is using a new second generation hidden selfie camera up here. And from my very limited experience, it is actually very impressive just how well it's able to hide itself and stay out of view, even more so than last year's first gen. But the images that come out of it definitely do not look any better better. Like that was the big weakness of last year's Fold's hidden camera. And it appears to absolutely be a weakness of this one again. You can see it does a fair amount of processing with the still photos, but I imagine a video call won't look too pretty. You know, I'll give it a shot. Maybe the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 will surprise me, but that's how it looks. Aside from that though, there's nothing fundamentally different in any technology across the board with this phone. It is still very much the productivity based tablet in your pocket that we know and love just settling into its form. Basically, if we expect any sort of different shape with a foldable from Samsung, that's probably just gonna be a whole new phone, just a whole new model. So in the meantime, this Fold 4 launches again at the same price as last year, $17.99. So I'll review both of these phones for sure, but low key, maybe the most interesting new hardware to me here is actually the new pair of watches here that Samsung's dropped. There's a new Galaxy Watch 5 and Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Some of you are already remembering that I haven't reviewed too many smartwatches in the past, but maybe leave a thumbs up or a comment on this video if you're interested in something on these. Basically, if you've been paying attention to Apple rumors lately, there's been all kinds of stuff brewing about maybe an Apple Watch refresh in September and maybe an Apple Watch Pro. But hey, here comes Samsung right out the gate just ahead of that with a Watch 5 and a Watch 5 Pro. So the Watch 5 has a sweet new design with a reshaped curvature and actually a flatter contact area on the bottom so there's more contact with your wrist for more accurate readings of everything. There's two sizes, 40 or 44 millimeters, and each one has a 15% bigger battery than before, thanks to the new shape, for a claimed up to 50 hours on a charge. There's a nice bright OLED display on the front and they're covering it with a sapphire crystal glass this year. And the whole thing's IP68 water resistant. Software wise, looks pretty familiar. Plus they've added things like detailed sleep tracking with stages, which is another thing Apple just added to the Apple Watch. But the Watch 5 Pro is interesting because it's a more fitness and adventure focused version of the same thing. So when you see them back to back, you'll notice it's it's thicker. It's a little more of a ruggedized version than the standard watch. They're only doing it in a large 45 millimeter size. And the display is sort of inset behind these titanium bezels. And the sapphire crystal cover glass they say is even stronger than the standard. I assume that's just because it's thicker. And they fit a 590 milliamp hour battery into this thing. So pretty massive battery without actually looking like a super huge watch. So they promise one and a half times the battery life of the standard watch, putting it up at 80 hours. And that is what I'm curious to test. So the Watch 5 Bluetooth only starts at 279 and then the Watch 5 Pro at Bluetooth only will start at 449. So interesting new hardware developments from Samsung here. Very curious to see that stuff. Let me know in the comments what you're interested in seeing for the full review. I am definitely looking forward to testing it. But in the meantime, get subscribed if you haven't already. That's how you'd be among the first to see the review. That's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.